would have been happier with a different outcome in the ball game last night. But hope you all had a good night anyway. Hope you all were able to get out and about and enjoy the town uh, a little bit. And uh, we got some uh, slightly early but extremely welcome wet weather. Uh, for, for those of us who've been living in drought, it was, it was great to see the rain come. But I uh, want to uh, try to move quickly to get to our uh, opening speaker this morning because he has uh, other obligations around town today. Uh, no sleep for, no rest for some people. Um, we've talked a few times and, and re recognizing the Caltrans chief, Malcolm Doherty, about the importance of, of the state government and the role they play in supporting our cities or can play or not play in supporting our cities. Um, and while we recognize Malcolm for the great work that's happening within the executive branch of the state government, it's also the legislative branch that uh, can really make a difference uh, to us here in cities, and uh, particularly in passing laws uh, that help advance the work we do or remove barriers um, that are interfering with the work that, that we want to be doing. And we're very lucky here in San Francisco um, to be represented by uh, somebody who uh, knows and loves the city well, um, our assembly member who represents uh, mostly the, the west side of the city, uh, is someone with a, a long uh, and diverse history in San Francisco, um, including serving as a leader of a major civil rights organization here, a very well respected organization, uh, and then coming in as a, an elected official serving as our county assessor and recorder, uh, which uh, is the guy who's really responsible uh, for making sure all those property taxes are properly assessed and brought into the city, uh, so that we can fund important things like transportation. So uh, we're, we're very grateful for the great work that he did as assessor recorder. Uh, he's been in the assembly for, uh, was elected two years ago, um, and has uh, emerged as, as a great leader, uh, not just generally for the city, but particularly in the area of transportation. So we're very grateful that he was able to break free from his 24 seven schedule to come and join us on a wet Saturday morning. Uh, so please join me in welcoming uh, assembly member for the state of California, Phil Ting. Well, thanks, Ed, and uh, I'm just so honored that you guys chose to convene in San Francisco this year. Um, I know Ed's done a really remarkable job and riding the ship at our MTA, which is, as you can imagine, a very tough organization, tough place to run. Uh, and every day you have 450,000 customers just on the rails and buses. Um, and so you can imagine the customer feedback you get on a daily basis, as I'm sure you all do. Um, well, I was asked to sort of talk to you about uh, an adventure with one of my bills. And uh, my bill was uh, AB uh, 1193. And, and really, the, the bill was very, very simple. It was brought to me by the California Bicycle Coalition and the former head of our San Francisco Bike Coalition, uh, Dave Snyder. And it seemed so incredibly simple. Bike lanes, uh, I don't know how bike lanes are governed in your jurisdiction, but bike lanes, oddly enough, are actually governed by state jurisdiction under Caltrans. And so it seemed very, very simple. Uh, we have these NACTO guidelines. I had no idea what NACTO was when, when we started. So we have these NACTO guidelines, and you know, we would just like Caltrans to adopt these uh, NACTO guidelines, which are very well respected by this national transportation organization, so that we could have uh, protected bikeways. And, and my, my first introduction to protected bikeways wasn't in the US, as probably most of us who do any biking were introduced to things probably outside the US. It was. Uh, as a sort of a fifth year study abroad senior when I was in China. And I spent, I spent a year in Beijing where bicycling at that point back then was the dominant way to get around. So actually there were a lot more bicyclists than there were even cars or people riding the subway. Um, and of course you'd have protected medians. I, I wasn't sure whether we were being protected from the cars or whether the cars were being protected from us. But it seemed to make a lot of sense and seemed to be a fairly uh, no-brainer solution and uh, what, our, what our strategy was, was just to introduce the bill year one, because there's a two-year session for us, and we have two years to sort of get the bill across the desk, um, and just to have a discussion with Caltrans. 
Well, we were, we were very fortunate. Malcolm Doherty, uh, who's the Caltrans director, and Brian Kelly, who's the secretary, who's you know, Malcolm's boss, were actually very supportive. But uh, for all of you who've ever dealt with uh, bureaucracy, and I used to run bureaucracy, and Ed intimately knows bureaucracy, there's a difference between what the head of the department says and then what the planner who's in charge of the particular uh, document or the plan or the piece of, um, uh, the, piece of the program thinks. And like any bureaucracy, I think they were very concerned, which they, which they should be, around liability and around doing something that may be construed as uh, far-reaching without any guidance from the legislature or from a public policy making body for all of you, probably your city councils, or for us, it's our board of supervisors. And so we spent a year um, just holding the bill, not doing anything, and just talking to them and um, trying to convince them that they had the power to just go do this and just adopt the NACDO guidelines so we could have uh, protected bikeways. And so it was, seemed pretty, pretty simple. I figured uh, we would eventually get there within 12 months. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we got a little bit closer every day. We never quite got there. So then in year two, we, were, we decided to move ahead with the bill and uh, move the bill forward and start to go through the legislative process. And, and what was actually helpful was because we had spent that year with Caltrans, we had their buy-in. Because frankly, without their buy-in, if they had opposed or they had even sounded skeptical or uh, kind of even waffled, we really wouldn't have had much of a shot getting it through the legislative process. But really that year was very, very helpful in getting them on board so that every time they came to a hearing, they presented information that they were um, very, very helpful throughout each step of that process. I think what was, what was very interesting is there's always kind of a curveball at the end. And we had this curveball come in at the end because uh, cities and counties were concerned about liability as well. And then because we started to protect cities and counties uh, from liability, my friends who were the consumer attorneys were very, very opposed because they were concerned that cities had too much immunity. So we were sitting there, uh, you know, not talking, uh, you know, not, not, not talking about bike lanes anymore. We were talking about cities and liabilities, which is something that really I wasn't prepared to even discuss or negotiate. It wasn't something that I was thinking about, but it's just, it's just a constant lesson that as you manage to move great public policy through, there's always a curveball or a wrinkle or something that you have to uh, iron out at the end. Well, fortunately, uh, cooler heads prevailed on all sides. We, we realized that we were all very supportive of having this protected bikeway um, act, not just, you know, f that would help San Francisco, but really help everyone in the state. And we were able to get it passed. Our governor did, did sign it. And I think what's very exciting, and we, we, we installed our first protected bikeway. I don't know if you spent any time in, in sort of City Hall uh, during your couple days here, but there's a protected bikeway for the first time um, in San Francisco. And we obviously, with this act, we want to be doing many more here. Uh, Long Beach has been a long leader in terms of installing protected bikeways and really uh, their bike lane infrastructure. So it's very exciting to see other cities follow, follow suit. And I think what, in the end, was Really, our, our lesson is what, what's been odd is coming from the executive branch and then being in the legislative branch is how often the two sides don't talk. Uh, we actually talk a lot more in San Francisco because we're sort of a, a small city and there's a lot of politics and we're in constant communication, some of it good, some of it bad. But in Sacramento, for the odd reason, the, the legislature and the executive branch really almost coexist is very much two separate branches, and that's something that I really want to work on over the next couple years, because I think that dialogue really made it so much smoother and so much easier throughout that whole process. Because again, without Caltrans working with us, without their cooperation, we wouldn't have been able to get anything done. They could have blocked it, they could have, they could have stopped it, and we really would have been at square, at square zero. But again, Building this stuff is so important. I know that all of you here are, are the true believers because for all of you to be here at 8 o'clock in the morning having breakfast and drinking coffee, I know that uh, you're, you're the most dedicated uh, public servants out there. But it's been amazing just seeing the transformation, which is why I've been so excited to uh, push this Protected Bikeways Act because I know that if we build it, that they will come. And we've seen that in San Francisco. Um, you probably can't imagine what the infrastructure looked like in 2006 unless you were here. 
but with our bike lane infrastructure really starting to get built out, we've seen a 100% increase in bike ridership. A and as you all know, if we don't have multiple modes of transportation in our urban settings, we're not gonna be able to grow. We can't grow by widening our roads or having better vehicle access or more parking. That's just not gonna be how any of our cities really grow in the future. So by building out this infrastructure, and now that bikes are, are considered, are, you know, really considered a serious mode of transportation, we see so many employees, we see so many people going to work on bikes, taking their kids to school on bikes, really getting around on bikes. It's very, very exciting to, to be in a city that's right on the cutting edge of that. So with that, let me just, you know, congratulate all of you for being here. Thank you for your, all your great work. Cities um, are really transformative and re really back. I remember growing up in the 70s and they were sort of places to be avoided and now they're places where everyone is really kind of congregating back into. So I just wanna congratulate all of you because you're a huge piece of that. If we could not get around our cities, get to our cities, uh, that would not be a reality. So again, thanks so much for all the work you do and thanks for, for being here this morning.